Hello, I'm Emma Bruner, and this week, Real Foot Forward is made possible by our friends at the University of Tennessee at Martin. UT Martin offers more than 100 academic areas of study with 18 undergraduate degree programs. Today's guests are Jessica St. John and Jordan St. John from Sweet Jordans in Paris, Tennessee. Welcome. This is Scott Williams, the host of Real Foot Forward from Discovery Park of America, where every single week we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our beautiful home right here in West Tennessee. I have some special guests for me today that not only are going to be interesting, but I promise you are probably going to make you hungry. I have Jessica St. John and Jordan St. John, who are from Sweet Jordan's Bakery in Paris, Tennessee. Welcome. Hi, we're glad to be here. <laughs> so, so uh, tell me a little bit, uh, Jessica, um, or Jordan, whoever wants to go first, tell me a little <laughs> bit about what first gave you the idea to start a bakery. So my parents have no baking experience whatsoever, and they don't have any business experience. So we thought this is a great idea. Um, Jordan, after high school, there really wasn't a lot of opportunities for him to grow and um, that would push him and uh, really get him off the couch. And uh, there was a period of time where my dad got really sick. And so what he would do whenever he did feel well is him and Jordan would kind of perfect our old family recipes that we had tucked away. And um, it kind of started with our cookies and our cookie dough that was my great aunt Ethel's recipe. And uh, him and Jordan would just be, you know, rolling cookie dough for different events and different, um, there's a Helping Hands um, charity in our community that goes and kind of funds different organizations here in Paris. But um, dad kind of noticed that Jordan was really good at just the, um, the rolling cookie dough and weighing it out and getting just the right amount. Um, he said, you know what, this could be something. So, so that's kind of where the whole idea started. And after a lot of prayer and, um, we kind of started Sweet Jordan's. <laughs> him so and my was, mom. was, uh, um, aunt Ethel, uh, was she famous for her cookies? Are they special in some way? You know what is so funny? So aunt Ethel gave my parents that recipe for their wedding. She gave them the cookie recipe and money. And what they did is they took the money and they put the recipe away in the cabinet and they haven't looked at it for years until recently. So she actually wasn't famous for it until now, I guess. But And is but she yeah. still around or is she? She is not. She's okay. past. Yeah. She's making but. cookies in heaven. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think so, Jordan? So, so Jordan, <laughs> what about rolling the cookie dough out? Do you like? Well, I don't know. I guess I like the chocolate chip and he likes the chocolate chip. Peanut butter, uh, yeah, peanut butter, peanut butter. We early on we had to make it a rule. We could not try the cookie dough, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a tough one. That would be yeah. a very tough one. Uh, <laughs> and so um your parents thought, you know what? This is working out so well. People are loving these cookies. I'm guessing people started yeah. saying, you guys should start um, a bakery. Yeah. Lots of people start saying we should sell them. And we had some other recipes. Like we have our, our homemade breads and our sweet rolls. And so we were like, let's let's do this. Let's open a bakery. And let's, let's have um, – and, and then people kind of just started saying, hey, I know so-and-so who has – down syndrome or has autism and started naming all these people as special needs that were looking for a similar opportunity. Um, and then we had a very smart businessman come to us and we were like, Hey, here's the idea. Here's, here's what we're going for. And he said, you know what? I think you guys also need some ice cream. And so we went, we figured out how to make ice cream. And so we make that homemade at our shop as well. So when so, you uh, pitched the idea to the business person, what, yeah. what is your elevator speech for the business? <laughs> How do you describe um, it? So basically, we just say we have a heart to do something that's going to make a difference in the lives of our community and um, and in in the lives of, of I really feel like a lot of people across the world. And uh, I think that Sweet Jordans is part of a movement. Um, but we just um, yeah, we just tell people you know it's 
it's not just enough to have a great story. You also have to have a great product and thank God we have a great product. <laughs> so so you, you have um, a great product and then you have a significant number of folks with uh, special needs who are working behind the scenes to actually make it happen. Right. Well, some of them are behind the scenes. Some of them are up front, taking your order, delivering your orders. Cause we've grown significantly. We're not just a bakery anymore. We also have, our coffee shop and we do soups and sandwiches and salads now because we all kind of got tired of eating all of our sweets and we're like, what are we going to do for lunch? So <laughs> we thought let's add some lunch options. So, so we do that now too. And, and they are all very, um, everyone has their different strengths. And so you have some people that uh, love to be on the front line and talk to people. You have those individuals that are more shy and want to stay in the back and just roll cookie dough, and they are perfectly content with that. So, and how uh, about how old were you and Jordan when all this started happening? Oh gosh, we were. Let's see, Jordan is now thirty. I think you were probably twenty six whenever mm -hmm. this all started, kind of going into place. Because sweet Jordan's is will be three years old. And we started a little bit before then. So probably 26 or 27. And were you, had you uh, gone to college yet or? Oh yeah. I had, I had just, um, so I was like 22, 23 at the time. And did you, I mean, do you have any, any restaurant education or None. experience? None. I hadn't even waited tables. No, wow. <laughs> neither wow. had my parents. So we kind of just were like, we're just going to listen to God and do what he says. And, and how did you find a place to put this bakery? Well, so that's interesting. We, there was a place down on the square in Paris and it was, you know, it was a little bit smaller, but it was, it was somewhat big enough for what we needed. And dad's like, it's affordable. Let's do that. And my mom was just like, man, I, I don't think that's where we're supposed to be. And so every day on her way to work, she would pass our location we're in right now. And she, and she just felt like God was telling her, you need to be there. So the businessman that we talked to that said we needed the ice cream, he actually owns the building. And so we, she went and she met with him and um, I would tell you, they had, didn't really have any startup money to do this. This is, we just told people what we were doing and the community bought in big time. And so that's, that's how Sir Jordan's really exists is that uh, a, a lot of prayer, a lot of God working behind the scenes and, and pe the community buying into it. And now, now for uh, anyone, there's, there are definitely people listening who, when, when you and I talk about Paris, we know what we're talking about. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> but some people might be thinking that you guys have a bakery in Paris. So yeah. um, why don't you uh, describe Paris, Tennessee just a little bit? So Paris, Tennessee, is uh, it's in Henry County, so it's right by Kentucky Lake. And, um, it's a, it's a good little town. And we're, we've lived here since we were mm -hmm. six and eight years old. And, um, we have a little Eiffel tower. Um, and that's, that's pretty it as far as Paris. I think you'll, you might see some people that go around and say bonjour y'all as a joke, but <laughs> that's really, that's really all the, the Paris reference you'll get, but we're, uh, we're home to the world's biggest fish fry and um, I don't know. It's a good, it's a good community. We're proud of it for sure. And there's, there's a really charming town. Um, and it's yeah. close to, it's close to the water, which helps. Yes. yes. Yeah. We have a lot of, um, we have Triton Bass boat tournaments have asked us to come out and do breakfast and ice cream stuff for them. And so we've done that, um, I think for about two years now. So, so you guys, uh, found a building. Yeah. Um, and how did you your parents, how in the world did they know what to do next? Oh, well, they, like I said, lots of prayer. And they but they really, <laughs> <laughs> well, they really just sought after they went to a couple of different um, restaurant suppliers and I'm like, hey, this is what we want to do. What do we need? And people were great about saying, here, I'll give you this and I'll even give it to you at a discount. And, you know, um, you know, we had the, the person who taught us how to do the ice cream is a place called Howdy Homemade in, in Texas. And they had just franchised the week after we got there. So if we had gone a week later, we wouldn't be able to know any of the information of how to do the ice cream or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, we just kind of and we're still learning. There's still different things. We're like, we can be better at this. But but uh, my dad has done construction his whole life. So um, he kind of did our play area and uh, different aspects of that. My mom is a fantastic designer. 
And so she, uh, she kind of decorated the whole place. If you ask someone, they'll tell you it looks like something you'd find in Nashville or that Joanna Gaines came and <laughs> decorated. So, um, but yeah, so we just kind of were putting together just all these different aspects and it all seemed to work out. <laughs> Jordan, do you like the ice cream better or the cookies? Well, I think I'm going to like ice cream better. You like the ice, ice cream? cream? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's great. Well, so um, opening day came. Do you remember what opening day was like? So we had our soft open with, um, we always have our first responders come in. So police and uh, firefighters and they all came in and yeah, it was, it was crazy. It was very busy. <laughs> and I think there were times that it was really, um, cause at the time I was working for a preschool and my parents were kind of running it, but of course we were helping and my other brothers and, and their, um, and my one brother's wife, we were all just kind of jumping in and like, yep, let's do this. And, didn't really have any employees besides us and our special team members. And so uh, we were like, okay, yeah, let's hit the ground running. And like I said, we've learned a lot since then. We've learned what to do uh, and what not to do. <laughs> what, how many, how many employees do you have now? So total? currently, currently we have 32 special needs individuals. Um, and I think we have somewhere around 20 support staff that you know are kind of they'll help or will help with uh, like taking orders or just in general making the sandwiches doing cookie dough actually doing the dough for it um and then we have different job coaches and stuff that come in that are so there are supplied kind of by um their insurance and stuff for some of the special team members um, and they will they are a huge help they help them make sure that they stay on task because some of them are very talkative and will go and wander so Oh, but yeah. So we have, I think, right around fifty. I believe. That's amazing. Yeah. And who did your graphic design? Because it all looks really, really good. Uh, so some of it is my mom. Some of it are just kind of friends of the family. I know um, we have King Print and Design did some of it. Uh, they're just they were just friends of the family, just local Paris people. So, um, but yeah, so they did a lot of it. What's the response been? Have you guys had a lot, it had much national coverage of what you're doing? Yeah. So we had, um, I think probably the biggest thing is that we had um, Fox 17 news out of Nashville came and the fair Dennis Ferrier came and did a story and that, that drummed up a lot of um, a lot of word about us. And so we had quite a few people, we have people come from South Dakota and, um, I think we had Maryland the other day, people from Texas and all over that come and, and to visit. And I think we had someone from Zimbabwe one time, but he was in for a fishing tournament, but we still count him because we're like, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. So do you recall where you were when you first heard of something called COVID? Um, <laughs> I remember thinking, oh, psh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> This is never going to come to America, right? Um, we, I don't know. We really, we really didn't think a lot of it at first. And then we kind of decided as it was, you know, it did come to America. And it was getting closer, I guess, to Tennessee. We were like, okay, maybe we do need to start taking some precautions with this for sure. And so what, how has it impacted your business uh, right now? Uh, so I will say we, we definitely took a dip in business. Like I think everyone did at first. Um, and so what we started doing is we're like, you know, we're, there's still people that, um, like our first responders that are still out there in our hospitals. We uh, did a lot of, um, cookies and coffee for them and, um, just kind of free of charge. And, but we started doing curbside delivery. So that helped a, a ton. And so we still had business. I don't think there was ever a week where we just like, or a day where we had just like no one come in. Um, and I will say since probably May, like end of May, beginning of June, I think we're kind of doubling what we were doing before COVID ever hit. So um, it's, it's one of those weird things that we heard whenever we started that after a natural disaster, one of the biggest things that the sales spike is ice cream. Huh. Don't know why. Yeah. Someone that um, someone from, I believe Ben and Jerry's told us that they're like, we sell ice cream like crazy after a natural disaster or a um, something like COVID. 
So maybe because it's comfort food. It has to be. I don't know, but so we've 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 definitely seen some some profit on the back end um, to kind of cover what we had missed. So we're giving glory to God for that for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. And little does Aunt Ethel know how much her I know, I know, is, is uh, comforting <laughs> people. Um, well, what um, what do you have planned? Like what once because COVID will eventually end once it ends yeah. what, what is your future plans for I mean you guys are obviously you've hit upon something you know that's mm -hmm. successful what what are you thinking so we have a couple different things we've recently just started our sweet Jordan's laundry company because we've noticed a lot of our specialty members that are very particular um they are so great at folding like our washcloths or aprons or whatever we had and so we we're like you know what this is another way to provide jobs for people and so basically you count, you come drop off your laundry, we'll wash, dry, fold it, and you pick it up whenever. And that has been, that's been great. We just started that, I think in May. So we actually started on like towards the end, or I guess the middle technically of COVID, but, um, uh, let's see. And then we also just started our sweet Jordan out and about, which is our food trailer. And that's done really great. We're hoping to come and do some different events around Union City and Jackson and We've already done one in McKenzie and uh, quite a few here in Paris, but um, we're doing that. And then we're also talking uh, to some people about franchising. So, yeah, I was curious about franchising. Uh, yeah. It seems like this would go over in a lot of other cities. If it's this successful, yeah. um, you know, in, in uh, Paris, you would think mm -hmm. that it would be also successful in other. Um, Absolutely. Other yeah. Well, we've had it. We've had a few people that have asked us to come into their communities. Yeah. Um, and I think what we've, what we really look at is, you know, is there a special needs community there that needs it? And so there are definitely some areas all over that need something like this that'll provide these opportunities. What about retail selling your products in like markets around the country? Yeah, um, we've looked at that. We've looked at possibly doing I, I don't know. I think we looked at Walmart for a bit, but then we kind of decided, no, it, it, something just didn't feel right about it. I think someone approached us from Target and we were like, oh, it still just doesn't feel right to do that. Um, but we've looked at possibly doing like our frozen, like our cookie dough, just kind of frozen um, or doing the ice creams, like in a pint version. We've looked at doing that. Um, it just, I don't think anything ever really felt like a hundred percent, like, yes, we absolutely need to do this. So. so for for folks out there that that um, have places like Discovery Park does, and we do have special needs folks who who work yeah. here, what would you say um, to those people who are hiring? You know, what kind of workers are people with special needs? So I will tell you that they bring a they bring an atmosphere to your business that. Is, it's undescribable really, but I would say it's just, it's a positive atmosphere that they really, um, cause they just love people unconditionally. They're just, they're so happy to get up and do that. They will, they will work nonstop. Like we have to make some of our special team members take a break. We're like, no, it's, t it's time for your break. You know, you have to take one. And I think that they're very meticulous. So if you have anything that takes a lot of monotonous, um, like rolling the cookie dough. That's a lot of monotonous motion. Like they can do that and they will do it perfect every time. Wow. Um, yeah. So I, I think that I would say that I would say they bring a whole new atmosphere to your business and they're also very meticulous about certain things. Excellent. Jordan, do you like working in the bakery? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He Excellent. tells people he's the boss. <laughs> oh, are you the boss, Jordan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was running for mayor. You're running for mayor? That's a new one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I didn't know yeah, about yeah. that. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. First, here at uh, Real Foot Forward, new Paris mayor. We won't tell the current Paris mayor. We won't tell him. Well, I think I think our one mayor is retiring. Our county mayor. Oh, well, maybe that's what he. Maybe he knows that. <laughs> that's it. He might be the next mayor. That's right. Well, it would be good to have mayor as a brother. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us here on the podcast. I'm uh, really looking forward to. I've I've stopped by there before, and the next time the next time I go by there, I'll be able to know much more about it as I buy ice cream and cookies. There you go, absolutely. And stop by our coffee shop. We make a mean frappuccino. Oh, 
Count on me. I'm going to be there. Thank you for listening to Real Foot Forward. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a review. Start planning your visit to Discovery Park of America by visiting discoveryparkofamerica.com. And also be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the latest updates.